Move it in my we're mouth. Already we are already having fun. <laughs> Kelly Sullivan Walden, you are just the woman. I am so grateful for you. You know, I am so grateful for the friendships I have and you are right on top of that list, girl. Thank you for being in my life. I am just, uh, and this, this baby would not be, you were, you were the catalyst. You were like the one. So welcome. Oh my God. Okay. I just have so much to say coming right out of the bat. Like, ah, I'm so excited. So happy to be with you and so excited. I have the little letter that you sent me with the book. So it stays with it. It's so awesome. It's so beautiful. I love it. Love it. Love it. And it's, I love all the swirly colors. It's like, it looks the way it feels. It's like magical and flowing. So, so and you, so you can, you can judge a book by its cover then? <laughs> in this case, in this case only, <laughs> never, ever again and never before, but today, yes, <laughs> especially the back cover. Oh, I have bangs and blonde. I know right. this is like I, yeah. the other twin, not the evil twin, but just, you know, the other, <laughs> I'm your evil twin. I'll do, I'll take that. There is one. nothing evil about you. Give me a break. Talk no, to my husband. Just... <laughs> we have our moments. We have our moments, but uh, evil spells live backwards. So that's how oh, it goes sometimes. I but I just want to tell you right out of the gate, just knowing that I was going to talk to you and reading your book, mm. the vibration already rises. Like I can feel it's like some people's conditioning field enters the room way before they do. And even virtually enters the room before they do. And it's palpable, like the work that you've done. Mm. And I think the work you've done on yourself, Plus multiply that times a million for all the people that you've taught. It, it creates a substance. It's like the, the vibration, you can touch it. It's Thank so you. I'm on day five of a cleanse. So I would, I normally, I was like, oh God, I hope I'm not going to be just like droopy, but knowing I was going to talk to you, I feel like, hello, <laughs> a little loopy, not droopy, but excited. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you so much. And I you know what? You. I have to I have to compliment you too because you had your book launch. Was it last week? And the days are just yeah, yeah. We've got like book so, baby twins. Kelly has this phenomenal book, you guys. I talk about how it's not just about mm -hmm. meditating in the morning and then forgetting about your energy. It's literally about filling yourself up all day long. And I told Kelly this has been sitting on my coffee table, and it's so fantastic. Look, it even has a tab because it's a daily, it's a daily, look how, look, it's so short, right? But just <laughs> reading it, I could fill myself. It's just like a moment. I could be watching TV and the commercial comes on or, you know, in the bathroom or whatever it is. And it just like read this. And then it even has an affirmation. And so, and it's just, again, the energy in this book is a beautiful, I'm just like, <gasps> so congratulations. You. you did an amazing job with this book. Thank this is you. one of those things that you need to get Go to Amazon and get the Desire Factor and <laughs> luminous arm, human, human, humanness. luminous humanness. I know it's a hard one to say, and normally I like to have titles that are simple, but this one just—it's just a thing uh, that it's been with me for a long time, so I had to honor it. But no, these honestly go together because this Aww. is a guidebook on how to be a human. It's literally we have desires. How do you fall through? Are there going to be disappointments and bumps along the way? Yes, but how do you get rid of that? How do you release it? It. And then this is just such a filler upper. It's like, it, you know, it, it's just like a little infusion of just pure, pure mm. positive energy. Oh. So I am grateful for you to bring that to the world. And thank you. Oh, and thank and you. one thing we, one thing we also have in common is oh, our let's, fabulous. Let's... Gotta give a shout out to Deborah. Deborah Jacobs. Deborah, Deborah has been your literary agent for how long? Wow. Since, oh my Lord, probably at least 10 or 12 years, maybe longer. Wow. I don't know. How old am I? How many books have I done? <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm having an identity crisis. I, I don't know. It's, it's been at least 10 years since wow. I had this 
it's all in your dreams when that one came out. And I think that was like 2000. Okay. I don't know about 10 years. By the way, Kelly is the person that I go to when I have those kind of dreams where I'm like, this is significant. What do I need to know? What is my subconscious telling me here? And we have dissected some pretty cool dreams before. You are a pretty that- incredible dreamer. I, my portal's pretty open. Yeah. And, but when we have those dreams and we get on a call and dissect it, I, I remember there was one where I dreamt of this beautiful white kitty cat that attacked me. Do you remember that? Right. And, and, and it mirrored a very beautiful person mm-hmm. in my life that mm-hmm. was attacking me. And so it was, right. it's so, fant- it, 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 dreams are so fascinating. And um, when you can remember your dreams and then have a, I mean, you're beyond an expert. You're like a master guru of dreams. You're just oh, beyond. Thank you, Christy. To, to help you understand like what the subconscious is trying to teach you. Oh, amazing. Amazing. It's such Can't a deep enough. honor to get to be in, like to be in a space of your dreams. I mean, cause when I, when I work on a dream with somebody, I feel like I get this privileged front row seat, even beyond a front row seat, like I get to step into their soul to some degree. And it's like, and to get to do that with you is such a high honor and a high, high Mm. privilege. And, and it's like, wow. And so there's so much that comes in talk about magical. So thank you for, thank you for sharing your dreams with me and for Mm. sharing your your stories in here and your vulnerability and your ups, your downs, your clients. There's so much, you know, from your soul is encoded in this book. It's not just about the desire factor, law of attraction and in your unique way. It's, it's really like Christie's soul connection to this and via the council. Oh my God. Whoa, dude, excuse me. Like dude is right. Yeah. I think we need a, we could have a whole conversation just about the council. Can you say something about, I mean, this has been a long time coming in the background sort of, I mean, you've, it's been peeking out for a while, yep. but now you're, you're out of the closet. You and the council oh, yeah. are out. So can you just say something about that? Because I'm, I mean, if I'm curious, I know other people want to know more about how yeah, your so, relationship uh, with the council. It's brilliant. And I mean, there's quotes along, from them all throughout your book. Yeah, well, they down, this is their, this is their information. They're the one that gave the step-by-step because like many people, I had pieces of the puzzle. I tried to figure it out. I, I got some manifestations. I kind of taught what I learned. That's what I do. I'm a teacher. I do. And then I teach. Right. And so it's like, I got the seven essential laws. As long as we know this, it's the, it's the law of sufficiency and abundance. That's the real kicker there. That's what we got to learn. Right. All this is true. And yet there gets a point in any manifestor's journey where you're like bumping, bumping. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I've done the therapy. I've done the coaching. I've right. done the, you know, the I've damn done dreams. the analyzing. <laughs> I've, done the, I've done the dream analyzing. I, I mean, I've done it all. How come I can't go any further? And, and that's where I got to, and I've never, I don't think I've ever shared this story publicly, but mm. I remember it was in um, two, the, the spring of 2018. So it was three years ago this time. And I was feeling like what I had known in my business and what I'd always done and always worked, I, it wasn't working for me anymore. Mm. And it was frustrating. It was scary because I'm like, wait a minute, all these people that have helped all of these years, now it's not working for me. And I still had clients going, oh my God, I just got to get, oh my God, I found my dream partner. Oh my God. And and I was getting like, well, crap, I can help them, but I can't help myself now. Right. And then there's that whole thing. Now it's, it wasn't ever a thing, but now it's a thing now, the imposter syndrome. Right. And I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I can't. I cannot continue to teach if this is not working for me. Mm. And, and that's, that's a depress. I got depressed because I'm like, this is what I do. This is what I'm called to do. This is what I love to do. This is, right. I'm so passionate about this. I can't imagine not doing this yet. I can't in, in my integrity, which is like absolutely hundred percent. It's like the pillar for me. I cannot continue mm. doing this. And I remember feeling disconnected from my life and my business. And there was a lot of other things happening, but I remember sitting in a bat, my bathtub, I was taking a bath and I was like, I need help. 
like one of those praying, like on your knees, praying to God moments. The, one of those moments, like, I know those moments. what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Right. Help me. Where are you now? <laughs> right? now. Right? now. <laughs> on it now. I don't Not tomorrow. Wait for it. Right. Yeah. And it was the, one of those, just, it was a bathtub moment and I was crying and I felt alone and I'm like, what is happening? And we even left right after that to go to Montreal and we spent a summer in Montreal. And I, we were, I was talking, I was on a date with my husband last night. We were talking about this, that I was just miserable. I was complaining about the, the car that we rented. I was complaining about where we were. I, I was complaining about the bugs that were outside with this beautiful garden in the backyard of the house that we were renting. And all I could complain about was the bugs. I mean, I just was, n- I was in that place right? I was in that lack place because I felt like nothing I do is making sense. And it was literally a shift that happened because I was driving with the boys in the car mm. and we were, dri- we were driving this Jeep, which is one of those where it's like the uh, electric slash, you know, gas. So it would turn off. Right. Mm. And I'm used to driving my fast Lexus. Right. Mm. So I, I would push on the gas and it would go right. This <laughs> Jeep would like stall. Right. Mm. And I'm literally in this rant. I'm like, Oh my God, I hate this car. I mean, I was using that kind of language and I'm zipping through the neighborhood and a cop pulled me over. <gasps> Perfect. Oh, I divine. haven't gotten a ticket <clears throat> in 20 years since applying law of attraction. And I'm not saying that I was an angel all of those years. I just never got pulled over <laughs> for speeding. <laughs> let's or, you be know, clear, right? Let's be clear, right? It was not that's an good. angel. That's honest. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's. I mean, that's just me, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the cops pulling us over and my one son says to my other son, see, I told you daddy's a better driver than mommy. And I'm like, oh. Try like what you kick me when I'm down. Insult to injury. Why don't you? Oh my god! It's like oh my god, that's hurtful. That's my little Virgo. He's like very, very, very straight with <laughs> like he's all about truth. And it's like, could you maybe you know candy coat it a little, a little, bit, a little oh. sugar on that one, would you? Oh yeah. So so anyways, my other son Alex, <clears throat> oh so wise, says to me, Mom, lately you haven't been yourself. Lately. It's like you take a lot, anything that's little and you make it really big. This is three years ago. So he was nine, not even nine yet at the time. Wow. Eight. eight. And so I went, wow, he's right. And that's where I just like literally surrendered it all. I just surrendered it all. And that's when I just started coming back into my life. And that's when I started feel, I got, I finally, because what I was doing, Kelly, I was working with tons of people and nobody was helping. Didn't Mm. matter how many more Mm. sessions and energy and all this other stuff that I was doing, nothing, uh, nothing was helping. Mm. Right. Mm. And that's Mm. when the council came through and that's what my life changed forever. Ah, but, but, but it was, it was the desire. Right. And sometimes the desire, oftentimes it comes from a dark night of the soul, a breakdown before the breakthrough, which is so great. Cause I think so many people right now are, are in that moment and hearing this, they, it gives them a little bit of a frame. Like this might not just be that life is going to hell in a handbasket and that's it. It's like, this may be the predecessor to your big aha. In fact, my biggest ahas, my only ahas of worth are the ones that have come from this kind of place. So, so, so now pick up where this leaves off. So you, so how did that, okay, then how did it start coming through? And like, what was the first, at least the first little moment where you knew somebody it's, it's not just you driving the car anymore. Well, I started getting direct notifications. Stop teaching the QSCA. Really? QSCA is how I made my living. Right. Really? Right. This is, I've certified over 3000 coaches. What? I mean, it was, it was a, it was like a direct order. Stop. Okay. Then it came, let go of this person in your business. What? I can't do that. No. Now I'm arguing, right? I can't do that. No, no. I'm a loyal person. I can't do that. And, and then it was like, let go of this person in your business. So it was three people I had to let go of. 
And I was like, oh, oh not listening. Ain't going to happen. <sighs> and w- when we finally came back home, it was the wildest thing because without even thinking about it, I'm writing to the gym and all of a sudden I get the notification, call so-and-so and let her know she's done after September. And I just picked up the phone. I, d- I followed exactly. I love you. I thank you. I'm grateful for you. You know, it's been a great run and I'm being guided. I'm being told, I'm being commanded that this is like, you know, gave them a month, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go into the gym, mm-hmm. did a workout, come out. I got the second command, second person. And I, 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 I could not not follow it. Wow. It, I, I called them up, same thing. And then it was a third person. That one took a little bit more doing and unraveling and and uh, but each person, it was like I was letting go of resistance I didn't really know I had. And it was that was big. And so just that releasing of that resistance, I uh, it was my son's birthday, September 17th. I'll never forget it. Um, because what I also was getting, I got the command to stop doing the QSCA. I got the command to create a sacred circle of light. And this is what it looks like. I had had to pull over on the freeway, Kelly, because I like got this vision of this like council of just like the high, really high. And they were talking to me and I'm going like, I I, I literally had to pull over. I'm like going, I saw, I saw it. I heard it. I felt it. It was like, I'm like, okay, whatever you want me to do. Right. So I, I started, I had created the sacred circle of light that was ongoing. This had Mm. just started Mm. and uh, it was in the sacred circle of light where the last person was going for the day. And normally I could hear them clear as day. This felt like my kids and the whole soccer team was talking to me. And I'm like, I can't, I can't hear. And all of a sudden my consciousness went out and their consciousness came in and we've been together ever since. And this phenomenal, they're phenomenal. I mean, cause, cause they bring not only the energy, like the resonance of energy mm-hmm. is like beyond, right? Yeah. I can it's, feel it. It's, com- yeah, it's committed me because I have to raise my vibration just to have them lower their vibration so we can meet in the middle. You so, have to do your part. Yeah. Mm. And, oh. and without even trying, I stopped drinking. I stopped drinking coffee. I was a three time a day coffee drinker. I drank wine at least, I don't know, three or four times a week, at least, you know, I mean, there so many other things just un- because I didn't need it anymore. I was, oh, so, I'm so in the light. And then the information that was coming to me to master my own energy, because stuff happens, right? Human stuff happens. Right. But now I'm like able to just process the energy of it, release it, and then move back into it because I've literally step by step, this is how I live my life now. Mm. All of those puzzle pieces that I put together that worked, I just had them in the wrong, couple of wrong spots and then what the wrong order. It's like, you know, the padlock that has the numbers that need to be in the same order unless it opens. <laughs> Remember as a kid, <laughs> we're of the generation where we had lockers and we had the padlocks and why is it my locker? <laughs> pre-digital days, right? We thought it was hip to that? have a calculator. Ooh, right? <laughs> but you remember how frustrating that was? You're like, I'm yeah. putting in the numbers exactly and it won't open. That's right. how I was. Like, yeah. why won't it open, yeah. right? So this is the, this is the, it's the exact oh. order to open up that lock. And they gave that to me. And, I, and I've been a student of it and I've been teaching it with my students and it's been incredible to see the clients expand. I mean, people have gotten off medications that they've been on for years and are totally in well being and lost weight. They're healthier in their sixties than they have been all their life. Wow. I mean, just, just in the, just in the, um, you know, the area of the body and well being. financially, there's been tons of people that have gotten more financial opportunities. Many people have gotten out of debt. Lots of people met their soulmate. It's It's so profound. And it's so, I mean, as you're saying this, and I'm just like, like feeling the vibe of this, it, it feels, 
I mean, in some way it's not exactly the same, but I, it's similar. Like the, the, the place that I was in when I wrote luminous humanness, it felt like I, I stepped into a room. I wrote about this at the end of the book. Like I had to, it's like, there's this room in my consciousness, almost like the attic, like this beautiful attic that's been well-appointed. That's got lots of light coming in and it, there's chairs and there's tea always waiting for me. It's like this beautiful <laughs> space, but I have to go up the steps to get in there. And then once there, something comes, comes in and it sits with me and I can do my writing from there and not just writing, but living and, but there, it does require a few steps. It requires rising and that's where the energy is. And I, I remember writing it, towards the end of writing luminous humanness. I didn't want to end the book. I didn't want to send it in. I didn't want it to be done because I associated writing this book with this anchor in this place. So it was a little bit of a leap of faith to press the send button. Like, here's the book. Ah, am I going to drop down into the basement? Is that going to be my place? But, but no, luckily there's enough residue and enough practice to, to keep it going. Relatively speaking, there are fluctuations, of course, but it feels like the message, like our, like we, there is a complement between the desire factor and luminous, luminous humanness. Cause it's the simple thing. It's like what Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. There's mm -hmm. a vibration where the solution resides and it isn't in the problem. And even in Tibetan Buddhism, they talk about samsara is the world of suffering, which most humans live in. This is, and we know we're in samsara when we're having FOMO, when we, when we have you versus me, or how come they, it's almost like almost not every time, but like social media seems to be a place. It doesn't have to exist there, but it tends to where there's a phenomenon of depression and like, how come they have it better than I do? Because people only right. post great things. But so it's kind of like, there's this vibration of otherness. We know we're in samsara, but it's just a blink away, just a breath away to be in the pure lands into the, the yeah. place of, oh, wait a minute. We're all connected. We're all one. Somebody's gain is also mine. And somebody else's pain is also mine. And let me alchemize it in myself. There's no gap. And, and there is where, to me, that's where the attraction happens. That's where the, it's kind of like the simple version is raise your vibe, plug in, become the human light bulb version of yourself, and then Aligned. let things like unfold. And then of course you can direct it and you can surf with it and, and do all the things that you can, you know, you can dance with it and flip yeah. around inside of it, <laughs> but at least like behold it. And it's, it's our, it's our legacy. It's all, it's, it's for all of us. It's, it's, it's not just That's yours. It's us. not just mine. It's not a select fuse. Yeah. It, it's, it's for all of us. And I love that you, that you brought in this story. I mean, it's always great when somebody who is like so many people, we all put you up on a pedestal and mm. to recognize that, I mean, because you do the work and you are a role model and it's great to know that there, that there's these moments of like, of pain and the pain is the predecessor to the breakthrough. One of my, um, North Star pe people, beings is Ananda Mayama. Have you ever heard of her? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I was introduced to her via a ton of synchronicities years ago. And every time I think about this, is this East Indian saint, Ananda Mayama, she's was pretty contemporary. She passed away not that long ago, but just thinking about her, like it shoots me up with, mm. Uh, she was known as the blissful mother. And apparently she just, she, she had a moment like you did. And like, I've had too. like in my, in the beginning of luminous humanness, I talk about dying, like literally dying. And that was what had to be my wake up call. Like almost not getting to have this body anymore. I mean, I came back at the very last minute, but, but she had a breakdown as well. And she literally was so tired of being in pain that she threw herself on her kitchen floor and didn't get up for like over a day. And she said, I'm not going to get up until I wake up until I'm filled with light. So if, if anybody like God, if you want me, you better fill me up. Otherwise I'm just going to stay on this floor until I die. So a tantrum on the floor. And then the light came in, it blasted her. And she 
whew, there's very few photographs of her because she couldn't be photographed most of the time because she was so vibing that high. And I met one of her disciples once, somebody who was like worked with her and he was so bright that it like, I, I had, I was like twitching just being around this man who had been just near her for a while. So mm. anyway, this is like, a, it's yeah, a North resonant. star. Yeah. It's what we're moving toward. And then I think there's ease and grace in, in proportion to us plugging in. And even if we're not plugged all the way in, if we're just interested in it, or I think we can have a tantrum. We can say now here, me, and we can cuss. I don't know if we can cuss now. I don't want you to get cut, cut off of Facebook, so I won't, but bleepity bleep, 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 bleep. And right. I well, think. it's ask and it is given and we have to align ourselves and we have to be the one that asks. And sometimes it's asking with an F word. <laughs> it's fasting. You know, it's like asking with an F. Fasking. <laughs> I love you. Oh, I love you, yeah, Christy I... Whitman. <laughs> And I love that you're, you know, you've added some blonde to you and, you know, Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta look like my kids. Otherwise people (laughs) keep asking me, they're, they're blonde head little boys with blue eyes. They would look like more like your kids and mine. So I gotta look like them a little bit. So, oh my God, (laughs) they are so precious. So beautiful. They're, they're so wise and so gorgeous. No kidding. Truly blessed. Mm. blessed. They're, Mm. They're amazing. I'm so, I'm so proud of them. And I'm proud of what we've created because that was, again, you, I don't think you know this about me, but, and I don't know that a lot of people do, I, you know, clients of mine that are close and do a lot of work with me because I share every aspect of my life. But um, I grew up with my parents. They're still together 65 years later. My mom's wow. 85. And my dad's turning 89 next month. Wow. They've always had a very dysfunctional relationship, very abusive mentally Ooh. emotionally and it's still like that <gasps> and so I remember as a That's kid rough. yeah and I for the first time I ever saw my dad actually he was threatening to break my mom's arm he had an <gasps> arm behind his back and my sister was home because she lived so in California sorry. thank you mm. um mm. he left the house and my sister and I were in the back bedroom of the house telling my mom to leave him why won't you? I was, I was seven. I'll never forget this. And I vowed to myself. Now I had to swing you yeah, know, a big right. way. Right? right. I vowed to myself, no man is ever gonna, you know, I kind of did the, uh-uh, make my own money. I'm never going to be stuck in that situation. And my, right. my poor first Same. ex-husband, my first husband, you know, anytime he looked at me wrong, I could make, I could leave. I make my own money. <laughs> well, not You're not the here. boss of me. I can, I can go. <laughs> See that door? <laughs> Got my name on it. Right. I'm walking out. I'm not afraid. I don't need you. <laughs> I'm choosing you, but I don't need you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my my husband now, Frederick's like, thank God you got that out of your system in your first name. <laughs> like, thank God I did. Because I don't, you know, it's, that's gone now. But it's like, I, I had to heal that. Because that was a, mm. it was an overaction to an imprinted wound. Because I was so clear, I'm never going to be, I learned from my mom. I'm never going to be in that kind of situation that I am literally forced to be miserable. And granted, my mom loves my dad. But um, it's, it, it was a very hard, my, my sister committed suicide, you know, and we're actually oh going God, on 25. Tough. It'll be 25 years next month. Honey. And that was the and prompting for your first book. That's how I got to know you sister. from your second yeah. book. Second book. Yeah. Perfect second pictures. Book. And, then, and then why did she choose suicide was my second book. Okay, this is but, seven, seventh book. book seven. Holy smokies. Holy smokies. 20 years, 20 years wow. of writing. Wow. Yeah, and I'm sorry about your sister. Say, oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm sure I, you know, she, I, I know the bigger oh, reality, is, but for yeah. the human. Oh self. yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, but my point is, is yeah. that my biggest desire factor when I was a kid, I remember I would go over to my friend's parents' house and even boyfriends, you know, I would kind of like become part of their family. And uh, I remember my first true boyfriend, Charlie Brusek, you know, it's like his mom and dad 
were so in love and they had such a sweet relationship and I would watch them and I'm like, God, Charlie, they're so different than my parents. And, you know, they never argued with each other and they might've had little, you know, little disagreements here and there, but they were so mild, mild. And it was like loving to, mm. you know, debate and, and to respect each other. And I would just watch them. And I was like, that's what I so want. And, you know, to have that as a, a very early desire factor and to how now have a relationship like that to have my kids live in that type of relationship. It's, it's amazing. My son, mm -hmm. Alex yesterday, yesterday said something that just so expanded me. He goes, mom, when I get married and have kids and I was like, Oh, he's, he's turning like, 12 can you, next can month. Can you say that again, honey? <laughs> He's turning Say 12 next time. month. So I have some time. Right. And, and I, and I was like, Oh, a grandbaby. He goes, when you have a grandbaby, will you spoil it? I go, Oh, you don't have to ask me that question. He I'm asked like, you that. Yeah. Wow, I'm your like, kids you are know me as in. a mom. Oh yeah, they are. Oh, oh, but wow. now, but now, I mean, my son is not even 12 yet. Now I have this desire factor. I'm like, for the first time ever in my life, the possibility that desire of being a grandma i'm like oh i like it oh my you know? god so that's that's the desire factor having like one of those moments of like ooh an ooh moment it's like you put it out there on the desire factor and it, it's like whew, so it gets to the magic gets to happen all you have to do is say ooh whew, exactly. and then it starts to do its thing right I don't mm. have to go, Ooh, but you're so young and I'm so old and you're da da, and it's going to be forever before let's you do have an arranged baby. marriage and I'm going to pick the right woman and uh, uh, I'm going to start putting together some spreadsheets right. <laughs> for the how What's your to sign? with us. Right. <laughs> start looking at candidates now. It's never too early. <laughs> you clearly are looking at two, uh, what it, Control. Wait, what is it called? Control freaks? Overcome control. Control. No, what the, recovered. To recovered control freaks. Contr oh, that right. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't recovered. know that the people. I mean, I'm I'm kind of back and forth on that. Some people could say that I could use a little more control. I'm a little ready, fire, aim. Um, but I have. There's a part of me that's that steps in at the last minute. And goes. Wait a minute. Let's get organized. <laughs> but it's usually five minutes before. <laughs> We won't, we won't let anybody know about that. Oh, shoot. This is live. Oh, well. <laughs> You're so fun. Yeah. I, I mean, you. that's really how it goes. I adore you too, sister. So this much. This is so fun. That's how it goes. I'm like, now I have the desire factor to be a grandma and who cares if it takes 10 or 20 years. I'm like, Ooh, a baby. Mm, having that's a future to live into. That right. I can hand over. <laughs> You're going to be adorable. Right. You'll be adorable. I'll get to be a grand aunt of yours. There you go. Well, Lisa Nichols was telling telling the boys the other night, the other day before we did our Facebook Live. She's like, I want to be the greatest auntie ever. And so you can come visit me in the Bahamas and you can eat candy all day if you want. You can play video games all day. You can stay up as late as oh. you want. Like, okay, okay, so I want you to tell them they can come to Topanga and they can hike and they can look at fossils in the in the caves and they can eat whatever they want. That's that's a duh. And what else? Oh. On the beach. They can go to the beach or the caves and they can hike and, and run around. There you go. Tell Lisa. Put... <laughs> Put that in your pipe up and smoke it. Put that in did your you pipe. Desire? Did you desire that? Did I desire did, which did piece? You desire to have that as where you live. You know, I yes and no. Um, I didn't. It's sometimes we don't know what we don't know because I'm I'm a city girl. I grew up in the nitty gritty city. My dad was a police chief of Huntington Park, which is a um it's a, it's a part of like Los Angeles and not like the, the nicest part either. It's like, you know, we moved out when I was seven years old and it was just high crime, but to me, all the city noises, that was normal. And whenever we'd go camping, it'd be like, Oh, camping trees and beaches. That's nice, but that's camping. That's not normal life. So I've, I've lived in 
LA, I mean, I've traveled and I've lived in Europe and other places, but mostly LA has been my home and I've lived all over LA. And it wasn't, it was like uh, 15 years ago, I was driving through Topanga Canyon, which is a part of LA, it's Santa Monica Mountains. It's between Malibu and, and Santa Monica, if you've ever watched, I don't know, Baywatch. <laughs> it's like in that around there. Um, and I was like, oh, well, so I guess this is desire. This is this is it. This is it. okay. Desire factor. So driving through, I was like, oh, ooh, it's enchanted. It's magical. Visiting a friend, I thought, okay, I wonder if I could. Okay, so yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> and then it was, <laughs> I hadn't thought about it though. No, no, no. Yes, but was. you know, but here's an interesting <laughs> thing. We 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 lived here for years, and then I this this house opened up in Laurel Canyon, which is a canyon in Hollywood. So closer to the pulse of the city, but still there's nature. And I thought that's where I need to be. It's a little bit more like in the heart of the city, but I'd gotten so spoiled living amid the deer and the coyotes and the crickets and the frogs here that living even closer to the city was, had become too harsh for me. It was like, I noticed that I, I couldn't completely relax. So I was, we were there for a couple of years, came back to visit in Topanga. And I thought, can we go back to Topanga? I think I'm now, I'm a city, I'm not a city girl anymore. I'm a country girl. I like trees. I like quiet. So, and I, mm. I produce a lot Space. here. I write a lot here. I didn't write anything that the time that we were in Laurel Canyon, I didn't produce anything. And it's like, it was too, there was too much buzz. So mm. I changed, but here I almost feel like, I mean, my friend Shez said, I'm like a unicorn that poops out books. Like, whoop, whoop, here's <laughs> another one. Like, whoop, here's an oracle deck. <laughs> Thank you, Shez. I image. love you, Shez. <laughs> like, but it's like, part of it is the quiet. <laughs> oh my God. So I mean, they take some effort. You know, it's not just complete, like, whoop, what, where did this come from? <laughs> like fertile myrtle, here's a baby, whoop. <laughs> but oh, it does, there is something about being in resonance. So I, yeah, I guess my desire factor did come into fruition and I didn't even know it. Wow. Well, see, okay, that's a great point. And then so for every single one of you watching and they're live on the replay, you know, in any capacity, Think of those spiritual breadcrumbs that you've had that have showed up as desire factors in your life and look at what came to fruition. And like Kelly just did, she just kind of started feeling way into it and just went, Ooh, yeah. And then, Ooh. right. Think about that because you're going to see evidence of your desires leading you to something greater for you to right. be more, to do more, to expand more, to have deeper connection to, to literally be your unique and different story because the desires that come through you are very different than the desires that come through Kelly and myself, mm. right? And that came through Marcy and Lisa and Sherry and Win Nicole right. and Bob and, you know, and Joe Vitale and all these other people, you know, like they're different desires. We all have different stories, but the breadcrumbs are there. So what is your breadcrumb right now? And are you letting yourself take that breadcrumb? And I think there's something in that breadcrumb that we don't even have to know the how or the when or the why or the where or any of those details. It's like, it's even, it seems like th the desire wouldn't come in if it didn't play a role. Like I, I love that you do this is what's almost like, it's like step outside of yourself, your ordinary self and step into that higher place and see you from that higher vantage point. Now, how, if, if it's like, if you were organi organizing the universe, how would you want this to go? Would you have given that breadcrumb to Christy? If, if it wasn't meant to, if it was just random, if it was that, that ooh, and that awe, no, nothing happens by accident like that. The ooh, and that awe, even if it's not meant to be exactly the same way, the way that we initially see it, it's, it's, it's pointing towards something that the universe wants for us. I feel like that's, that's a piece of the puzzle when it's not just, it's what I want because I'm Veruca salt as I want it now, daddy. <laughs> I want the purple one, daddy. <laughs> it's not just like, 
ego run riot. It's like, Ooh, that can come from God knows where, like it might come from an ego. It might come from, we don't know, but I feel like checking it out with, would it behoove the universe? If I was CEO of the universe, would it be good for all if this came to be? Ooh, I could see how that would make sense with the larger tapestry of life. All of a sudden, it's not such a, like, it's me against the world that I've got to push my way through come hell or high water. It's like, no, I, I feel like I'm in collaboration. It's not like, what is it? Um, in Gone with the Wind? As God is my witness. <laughs> Never be poor again. <laughs> Vivian Lay, we don't have to go there. <laughs> if you could start there. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> help me. God, I'm feeling dramatic today. I don't know what it is about you, Christy. It's so fun. But coming in to say, start there and then jump up to the higher place. Go up to the attic or up to the roof. <laughs> and oh then God. see what happens. <laughs> oh, Lord, I need a mint julep right now. <laughs> Okay, it's been comedy hour with Kelly Sullivan. Da, 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 da. <laughs> exactly, we did a little comedy break. Who knew? My friend Nancy tells her, oh, she and I were just talking. She's super funny. And she's like, why do you feel like you need to be serious? And I'm like, I'm not a comedian. I'm not funny unless it's oh. accidental. It's like some people can say, hi, I'm a comedian. I could never do that. The moment I did, it would be like, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> But if I don't have to be funny, then it's like, then it's, then, then there you go. There's room. So there you go. <laughs> and curtsy. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> and, and scene. <laughs> What's my motivation? It's Christy. Okay. If you, if you are not having a good time. <laughs> like God. Watching us or, just laugh. Or trying to lock me up. You need the desire factor. <laughs> you need the desire factor. You seriously need it. You need it. You want to sleep with it. You want to, you know what? I want to add this to it. Dream oh. with this baby. I always say in my, in my, the workshop that I recently did called dream Festing, which is very much the sister of this book. It's Love about it. like the moments that book end your sleep are prime real estate. So I've been reading the desire factor as my bedtime story, going to sleep with it. And it's been rock in my dreams. I mean, I've been having some amazing dreams. It's like the dreams get to take their cue from the content. And like, there's an expediting that happens when we, when we feed ourselves before going to sleep with something like this and not just, I mean, you can watch whatever you want to watch on Netflix, fine, but cleanse the palate, watch, and then read this and watch the movie in your mind take care, like yeah. take you on a journey. And then when you wake up in the morning, flip it to a random page or pick up where you left off. And so your book ending, your conscience, your conscious mind with your subconscious, it, there's an expediting effect, I believe, expediting the desire factor when you incorporate dream time with this. That's my two cents. Oh, I want to add to that. Love it. Love it. And just even putting it by your bed. Yeah. Doing your set is like absolutely necessary. Yeah. Totally. And I do the same thing, by the way, but keeping it by your bed, it's like the energy's infusing into your subconscious yeah. as you are so like a sponge during that time. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just soaking it up, soaking it up. Like these beautiful, well, we have gone way, way oh, isn't it? we've gone way over. Crazy. Oh my God. I know. So yeah. you know, two girls having fun. Like we usually do. Like I told you, Kelly, just a regular, you know, simple conversation between two girls. Having it's a good like time. a Cindy Lauper fest. Girls just want to have fun. <laughs> That's it. It's true. We, I want to have fun and I want to hang out with you and I just want to do it more. So you have to write your next book so we can do this or hang out in between. We can hang out in between. We're allowed to talk in between do books. A unicorn, poop. a unicorn poop oops <laughs> oops <laughs> oh, oh my god. god i so love you i love oh, you too you are very funny thank you you Christy. are very much a comedian 
I'm better I when I don't Bye. try. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet dreams, happy desire factor, everybody. Congratulations, Christy Whitman. I'm so excited for you. You're off to the races from glory to greater glory, and you're taking us all with you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate you tomorrow. Same time, same station. We are going to have one of my dearest friends, the amazing Bob Doyle. Love that man. So thank you, Kelly. See you You're soon, so everybody. Bye, Bye Christy. Everybody.